Hello and welcome back. Welcome to part three of our Ravel London bus build. And let's get straight into it. Uh, first of all, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Um, hit that notifications bell so you get notified of uh, the videos as soon as they come out. And uh, if you were following along in the last video, uh, we got this done. Okay, we've got the engine. There's the uh, Leyland engine. Not only is it mounted in there, but we've also got it all weathered up as well. And that includes everything underneath. The exhaust system, tail shafts, differential. All done. I don't know if that's exactly how I'm going to have it at the final result, but that's a good start. So that's all done. And uh, thank you all for your comments in that last video. And uh, I really appreciate you know, all the feedback I can get. So what we're at now, bring this across, is step 18. We've done the tyres up there in step 16 almost. All right, they're still in here. The uh, rims are painted in the undercoat them all in black. I'm waiting on the uh, paint I need, so we won't be painting them yet. So we're just going to move straight to step 18. Now, this gets a little bit, well, this gets quite complicated. There's quite a lot involved here because we have the um, the ultimate edition, the premium edition kit. We have all the photo etch and the wood uh, floor. Let's have a look at what we got to do. First of all, there's different colors need to be painted on this floor. Let me grab the floor, which is here. There it is. So pretty much explain what needs to be done is these sides here need to be painted in aluminium. All right, no problem at all. We can fix that. The floor on either side under all the chairs needs to be done in a purple red. Um, this color I'm getting specially made up by Outlaw Paints. Um, that will also be the color of, I'm just checking the instructions at the same time here, uh, the top of these here, which are the footrests where these seats go on here. Okay, now in the center here is the wood, wood floor, and at the back as well. That's all wood. So is in here, and uh, yeah, that covers the wood areas on this lower level. Also, we have to add photo etch. So of our sheets of photo etch here, all right, which there's a ton of, it looks like we need these parts here which are all these gratings and grills which is probably where all the um if the bus is air conditioned or not too sure but i'm guessing that's where the air would come through it's represented here in plastic here and here but we need to cover that in photo etch and that goes straight over the top that's not a problem um, but what we do have is this section so what i'm going to do is we'll take this out of the way I'll put a photo up here I took of the photo etch instructions, which is step 18, which take no notice of the number 18. That's really not in any particular order. But because we're at this stage, we need to work on it. So we'll look at those instructions there. But as you can see, first thing we need to do is take off all the detail around this area here and on this Okay, so that needs to be sanded off. Now we can do that quite easily. It's not really a problem. If we go over this detail of the wood area on here, which is slightly raised, it won't matter because that's getting covered anyway by the actual wood that came with the kit. So all that needs to be removed. Also needs to be to be removed. Uh, and going by the instructions going down, you'll see these areas. All right, so there's bits around there that need to come off. And also on here, we'll come back to that because I want to talk about that part. Um, also, there's a piece across here. And again, these are just little, I don't know, safety like um, areas where you put your foot that are non-slip. They'll get replaced by the photo etch, which I think is probably these areas, these parts or some of these parts here cover and replace all of those so that needs to all be removed um sanding it filing it we'll we'll see how we go with that process 
um, down on the back deck where you stand on the on the back of the bus. Uh, all that's going to be wood. The wood continues here going by on the plastic, um, but this will be covered by the staircase going up to the upper level. And this also here is covered by a large cabinet, which I think includes possibly a first aid kit or something. So that don't worry about that. That'll be uh, covered. So will these walls here on the side. Um, there, there's pieces that will go and fit in there, and there they'll be painted the um, the actual red of the bus. The tops of these need to be painted the red, I think, as well. Uh, let me just check on that. Purple. Okay, so that's the purple color. The same color we're going to do the floor in here will be this area here. All right, remembering that seats will go on top of that. So I'm not sure at this stage how much of that will actually be seen. This part here, referring to this part, I've looked at the photo etch. I know it's hard to see the detail. I can't get the camera much closer, but the detail on that is quite is actually very good. And I think that replacing that with photo etch is really replacing something that is not going to make any uh, visual improvement at all. So I may leave that on there. I think I'll leave that on there. That'll be fine. But we will take off all the rest. Okay, so as you can see in here, I'll just slide that out part of the way. One of those is that floor on either side. I'd say it's these two here, or maybe these ones, not sure. But they cover that completely, all right? So these will be painted. So we have to glue these down in place and paint them, all right? And then, of course, there's our wood floor. Okay, there's the panels that we've got to go down. So, so let me just uh, get all this back organized, and I'll just we'll just talk about the painting process. Be back in a sec. Okay, so for painting this, there's going to be a process that we need to do this in a certain order. The most important thing is that I don't want to get any paint on the surfaces that I need to put the wood on. I want that to stick directly onto the plastic so that it will be not on a painted surface. So it's going to stay there. So this will probably be masked up. Okay. But the first thing I would put on those metal walls on here and get them stuck down and clamped down and make sure they're completely flat. That way that can get painted um, the sides, like I said, have to be aluminium, so I'm going to have to mask up um, the sides. Uh, I'm thinking the best way would be to, after the photo etch is put on here, mask that up or not even bother because it's going to get covered with the metal. So um, paint this the aluminium on each side. Then put the metal floors down. Okay, mask this. Of course, we've got to put all our photo etch in there. There's a lot of photo etch to get all done in there. It'll have to be painted. Um, once the floor is masked up, uh, then we'll come along and do that purple color that will do all that. And then uh, after that, we will be able to put the wood down. That's that's the plan. That's how I'm thinking of working this out. So, yeah. Uh, pretty complicated, but uh, we'll, I'll show you the process as we go, of course, and uh, and uh, fingers crossed we'll get uh, a good result without any problems. Just making sure I check that I've got everything. There's quite a lot of photo etch up around this area here. We've got to put photo etch on the, on the side here. There's a panel along here that needs photo etch. A couple of pieces on there. All this, there's lots of strips. There'd probably be about... 20 pieces just in this area alone. So that all needs to be uh, sanded down. But, uh, yeah, we'll do that. All right, uh, enough talking, and I'll get on with this. And uh, yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed, the paints will arrive. We'll get those rims painted up too. We'll be able to have a look at those. All right, I shall return. Okay, welcome back again. Uh, I've taken all that off. Easy. Uh, just went along there with a sanding stick, took it all off. The ones that were in close there, I actually used a little file here I bought. Um, 
some time ago. I'm not even sure what brand it was. Maybe Tammy, I'm not sure. It just, just lightly went along there and just took off the bits to, into the corner and uh, tidied it up. Perfect. Um, also, use, using the um, Icky Stickies um, nano files here, fantastic. Uh, I started with a medium, started working on the bit around the edge here that's going to be replaced with Photo Etch. Started with the medium and got it all off in no time and then went along with uh, a super fine one, which is that one there, and uh, got it down smooth as you can see there. That one's that side's already done. And uh, you can see how smooth that came off. I'm just going to take this side off here, a little bit across there. And I'm pretty sure that's it. There may be some on the back here. I think I might have to take that bit off as well. Just checking the instructions. Um, Yes, that will also come off along with that little raised bit there, which is the pole. Um, that raised section, that comes off as well. So no problem with that. And again, I don't need to worry about um, scuffing the bottom here because this will be covered in wood. So no problem. All right, I'll continue on with this and I'll come back with a bit more progress. Back a sec. Okay, so I'm back with uh, the first bit of photo etch we need. Um, the other floor I've got that uh, I've just washed it make sure there's no plastic dust on there I've got that clean so that's drying now this is the piece of photo which we need to go in and on this we need to place all the other pieces of photo which which are already marked on there is where they're going to go and just remember this steel here is literally steel uh, it's like four times harder than the other brass photo which photo which so make sure you've got a very sharp knife and also, if you need to sand any nubs off that might be left, um, your normal sanding stick's not going to do it, but you're going to be there for eight, for ages. Um, you really need to use some files. These um, sticky um, diamond files here are perfect for photo etch uh, of this sort anyway. Um, yeah, great stuff. Just a few wipes across there. In fact, I'll show you... Uh, another thing just a tip as well there was a nub just on the center there rather than going across don't do that because you'll bend your photo etch all right try and go as much as the angle of the piece as you can and be very light and you won't bend anything there was also a couple on the edges there just slowly went along there like that and it was done all right so just be careful these obviously it's not going to bend easily but Particularly if you're doing brass photo etch, um, bends easily, but yeah, be careful with it. All right, uh, I'll get the brass parts off now. Um, here's the instructions for it. Um, like, there's what we're doing now. Okay, so we need all of these pieces off, and they've all got to be placed onto this. Okay, and then this whole piece piece will get placed onto our part there easy eh anyway i'll give you some tips on gluing these down and trying to, and getting a nice and neat job and uh and getting that looking really nice all right i'll be back in a sec when i get some of this ready okay back again um just about to put some photo etch piece on just to show you how i go about this now this is sitting on a very thin piece of blue tack okay just to hold it in place so it's not going to move around. There's our first piece, which needs to sit on there. Not a problem at all, really. All we got to do, normally I've been using this clear flexi CA, ideal for photo etch from Iggy Sticky. Great stuff. But for this application, um, it's not going to be as, as, as um, useful for me because it dries a bit too quick. Okay, this drives, this probably gives you about four or five seconds to move your part before it dries. So I need something that will not instantly set quite that quickly. So what I'm using is my go to is my uh, Ultra Glue by MIG Ammo. This is a photo etch uh, clear parts glue. 
great stuff. I've used this in my videos before if you haven't seen. Um, you just put a little bit in here, water it down to whatever cons consistency you want and work from this. Um, I've had this, this could last months, you know, it's amazing. But this will dry slowly, okay, very slowly. And you'll be able to um, maneuver the piece around wherever you need it to go. Now this also dries completely clear, but still we don't want to use more than we need to. I'm going to apply it with a toothpick and I'm just going to touch it in about four or five spots along there. It's going to spread out, so it's not going to be a problem. And then we'll place this in the position. Now I do have a, uh, where is it? A wax pencil here, which will help in picking it up and placing it exactly where I want it. And then I can use my tweezers to maneuver it precise. Now, another trick with this, particularly these longer pieces, try and take them off as flat as possible. Um, you want that to sit down there as flat as possible because otherwise you're going to have to be making sure that there's contact along the whole thing as you're pressing it down. Okay, so if you find that the ends are turned up after you've taken it off this. The metal sprue here that tends to happen if you find the ends are sticking up a bit turn it upside down right and just bend each end up a little so that if anything it bows in the center okay that way when you've got it in place and you're gluing it right all you've got to do is press the center where it's bowed up slightly and you know that the ends will be in position and you just got to do that with one hand all right that'll work otherwise you'll be trying to hold both ends and you do need to hold it i would say with this probably for about 15 seconds 20 seconds and then let it go get your next piece off and get it ready to go uh, tidy it up and by then you know i would say after about 20 minutes each piece is quite well and set and then after about an hour for sure it's not going to go anywhere all right, um, these pieces, there's a lot. They're all individually numbered. Every piece is different. So I would suggest just going along one at a time so you don't get them mixed up. Don't take them all off at once and have them all laid out because you could sneeze and they'll all get mixed up and you're going to have a great problem. <laughs> all right, so uh, I'm going to stick this one down and then work on the next one, which will be actually a longer one. I just wanted to get the one down where these come in contact. And there's one along there, which will be number 146 off the photo edge. All right. So I'll come back and let you know how I'm going. And if there's any issues, I'll let you know as well. I'll be back shortly. Hey, welcome back. So a bit more progress. So there's all our little bits all attached onto that plate. That's gone on really well. Not really nice. Uh, and I'm just going to... I've test fitted it, but we'll do that again. I'll also show you bringing this across. Um, I've taken these strips of photo etch, put them on. They're just sitting there. They're not glued on yet. I just did test fit on those. This piece will go down and cover that area that we sanded all the detail off and fits beautifully. So that's going to go well. Now we've just got to uh, glue these on and they fit fine. I don't knock them off <laughs> and then what i'm going to do now is take the steel plates which are the floors i'll take them off the sprue tidy them up and and test fit those and make sure they're all in there as well um, are going to fit fine um, there's also well there's a lot more photo etch we've got pieces that go down here on the side and on here so I'm just waiting till I put the floor in first just to see how tight a fit that is. I don't because these are going to go down. See how low they go down. As they make contact, but it should be it should be fine. We've still got photo etch to go around the base of here. And of course the wood floor, but this all depends on our painting sequence. Alright, so I'll get some more parts off and uh glue this down again using the I'm really going with the MIG ammo glue that I've worn down. It's 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 gone on really well, and uh, as you can see, it's nice and clean and uh, and and sticks fine. All right, so I'll be back and we'll have a bit more progress.
Okay, welcome, welcome back. We're just uh, another little update here. Uh, I've glued those on. Fine. Um, I've cut out the floor plates from the steel, and they fit absolutely perfectly. Just make sure you get yourself a, a file, one of those uh, diamond files or something. Make sure all these edges are completely smooth so that it's going to fit and sit in there flush against everything. All right. Uh, this will still fits in there with these either side. Uh, perfect. Uh, everything's just fine. The one thing I did check was on the instructions here, it shows uh, the pieces that go on the edges here. All right. Photo etch goes in there and across the back here. But on the instructions, it doesn't actually show. It looks like they just they're just standing there in midair, but they're not. They're actually connect glued to the piece that goes in here be behind the driver's compartment or well, the front of the bus and looking out over the engine uh, hood. So what you need to do, and it doesn't really make that clear in the instructions, is you need to get your piece out, which is J76. And there it is there. That's the piece that's going to sit in there and attach your photo etch to it. I've just test fitted this now and just seeing how it looks. And it's perfect. They've even left a slight gap along the bottom there that will compensate for your metal floor sitting in there. Okay. So when we do come to fit this piece later on, it's going to slot down into that into those spots and over this here perfectly. But these do need to be glued onto there. Okay, so that's why I've taken the piece off, tidied it up, and I'm going to glue that on there now. There's another one there, and that will go on the other side like that. Okay, and they they fit fine. So so far so brilliant. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so I will continue on and uh, get to the next point where I need to let you know a few things, okay? Back shortly. Hey there, back with a bit of an update. So I've put in, glued in the uh, side photo etch there and there, and I've just put this floor piece in just to test fit, make sure it does fit in there after installing that first, and it does best way to check is make sure all the holes for the seats all line up and the, and it does it's all fine so that's going to be perfect so i'm getting fingerprints everywhere i should have washed my hands i'll give that a clean with a bit of uh isopropyl but um yeah fits in there nice but before i um start gluing this down um i need to mask up where the wood deck's going because i don't want to get any paint on here and uh, I just want to make sure it's right to the edge um, because the wood deck, I want that to go straight down on the bare, bare plastic so it's got a good surface to seal and uh, adhere to. Now, I also did round here so you can see all the trim photo etch around there. Sorry, it glares to adjust my lighting, but there you go. You can see it there, including the piece across the back. Uh, if I remember right, that will be painted yellow um whereas these i think are aluminium not sure of that back piece but i'll have to check the color guide but uh yeah that's all gone on um this still haven't attached that yet like i said i'm waiting i'm going to tape that up mask that up now all the floor is going to get masked up so we don't get any overspray on it and then i'll be able to attach that which is also fits fine and um and then probably we're getting close to be able to put at least put the um, primer coat down um, after these are glued in. Uh, but these will take a while to glue. As, as you can see, the size of these pieces are. Um, they're going to have to be clamped down. And uh, we'll probably use our um, clear, fat, clear Flexi CA glue here from Icky Sticky. would be the best way to um, make sure that's going to stay down. That's going to be very important. All right, so uh, I'll get on with that. Uh, and there's also a couple of bits more of this uh, metal work to go around here as well. Just here and here, I think there's two pieces. So that'll also get stuck down. Okay, I'll be back soon with another update. All right, so working on the back here, a couple of things need to 
give you a few tips on. Uh, one, there's a hole you need to drill there. It's 1.5 millimeter hole. Not a problem. Just use your little drill bits. Done. This bit of a photo etch in here. Um, I'm just applying my MIG ammo diluted here with a toothpick and just touching it along there very lightly and then positioning it. <coughs> this sets quite slowly. Um, so you've got plenty of time to move it around and get it exactly where you want. And that's where it is. Spot on. All right. Now make sure these ends, there's no bits of metal off there. They've been, you've sanded them down, down because very tight tolerances here. Remember, there's going to be a piece as a wall that's going to sit in here. And you don't want a bit of metal impinging against it and causing you know, a, not a perfect fit. Otherwise, you may have problems elsewhere on the kit. Same with that hole there. Make sure that it's not uh, overlaying any of that hole and you'll be fine. Now, these parts here are a little bit tricky to figure out. So on the instructions, which I'll quickly show you here. Okay, so we're looking at this part here. That's the steel piece. And it's going to sit pretty much there. Remembering there's a panel that goes on here and you need to have that gap in the back there. So make sure that's positioned exactly right, which it will, not a problem. This will go right to the edge, okay? Just as it is in the instructions there, okay? The tricky part is this. So they've got these brass parts, these parts here, and the way the arrows point, they look like they're sitting on the edge of this. You know, like as if that's pushed in a bit further. And these are sitting sort of in there, if you know what I mean. Um, that's what it looks like here, all right? But if you go to the next step and look where you drill the hole, you'll notice that well, where's that silver steel piece gone? It's because this actually sits on top of it perfectly on top of it. Now there is a gap, even on the instructions, that you can see there's a gap there. And over here you see that gap as well. And I'm thinking, that's strange. Why would they show a gap in the instructions if they if that's not right? Now I have test fitted it and as far as I can tell there is no gap. It should fit on there perfectly. And it glues on top of that. The reason it glues on top of that, and I'm trying to figure out why even have this there in the first place. Um, why not just have that glued in there? It's because you've got the wood floor going down there. And with that height, that would be a trip hazard, wasn't it? wouldn't it, if the passengers came on? So this sort of levels the, the um, floor of the bus with where the wood starts. So there's no trip there okay understood so they've gone to a lot of trouble to think to put that there just to give that height difference for that to go on top of it and that to go on there try and do that holding the instructions it's not working um so that's going to go on top like that and to the edge all the way okay you know what i mean and then we'll have that piece go in there. And well, trust me, it does fit. I've test fitted it. <laughs> so what I will do first is uh, the steel piece here, I'll glue that down first. I'll even clamp that to make sure that's down very solidly. Um, I'll use a couple of pegs. Um, another little tip, you can buy these little pegs here in cheap shops. Uh, they come in really handy or just regular clothesline pegs, although they might be a little bit big for that. Otherwise, there's clamps like this. So keep your options open. I'll glue that down first. When that's all glued properly, um, I'll glue these onto the top in their position. And then we'll come back and have a look at that. This piece here, I've just glued. It's already glued in. That's drying. All right. Okay, good one. I'll be back again shortly. Hey everybody, welcome back again. Another bit of update. I've got all this uh, masked up just to protect it from getting any paint on it. Like I said, just the uh, these will be going down, of course, on the sides here. They're the next step. I'll be gluing them on. Uh, this is just to keep the paint off. I want that 
plastic to be bare plastic for the wood um, flooring to get glued to. So yeah, so the next thing we'll be putting these. Now there was a couple of little bits of photo etch I'd almost missed on the instructions. There's two little rings that sit on there. So I've glued them on. So these are pretty much uh, set to go in. I'm going to glue them down pretty much now, clamp them and leave them for quite a while because of the size of them. So I'll do that and that. And uh, other than that, uh, this part here went on fine. The metal piece underneath and the photo etch on top has all gone on there nicely, this piece here. That pretty much completes uh, all I have to add onto this um, other than these two strips. And then we can start with uh, putting some um, base uh, undercoat onto them. So uh, yeah, just got to glue them down. So yeah, progressing well. All right, so I'll come back when uh, these are glued just before I'm about to go put some paint on. Okay, cheers, back in a sec. One more thing I thought I'd mention, I just gave this a quick sand on the underside there just to scuff it up so it'll uh, adhere, adhere to this a bit better with the glue. At least I hope it will. <laughs> All right, okay, I'll be back in a sec. Just one other thing, <laughs> while I'm waiting for glue to dry and later, primer to dry. Um, there's plenty of things to do while you're waiting and one of those things was back on the first page of the engine build with all the photo etch here. Uh, we've done all that engine of course was this one here number three and even though this is later on in the build it just needs to be done and as you can see by the number 32. We need to make 32 of these brackets to go on the back of the 32 seats. Right, so here they are here. Well, that's a few of them. The rest are all on the sprue here, need to be taken off. So in between, what I'll do is I'll fold all these. Um, they just need two folds. And I'll put them all away here and uh, they'll all be done. So I can slowly work through those. And depending on how well I go, um, I might uh, get some of the actual seats off and they'll be able to be placed uh, on the seats too. So that's done for when that step comes up in, in the uh, build as it goes along. Okay, all right, again, back shortly. Okay, update again. Um, this side stuck down. I didn't have enough clips to do both at the same time, unfortunately, so I had to do one side at a time. I've just stuck that down. I'll leave that for a good hour, hour and a half before I take those clamps on off, but again, all pre-fitted so I knew it was going to go down fine. Um, so that's all done. Uh, while that was drying, I was waiting for the clamps. I got all the seats number 80 off and I've um, tidied them up. Uh, fortunately, there's not much to clean up on them. So they're all there. Um, all the brackets for under the seats in here, 36 of them, they need to go on the bottom there which I'll go along and do that. But first I need to get all the other seats off, which is about that many again, I think, which are number 84. I'll keep them separate. Um, yeah, I don't know if I really want to get them mixed up, but yeah, they're kept separate. So um, I'll take the rest off the sprue, let this dry, and then we'll come back once again shortly. Okay, back again and ready for priming. Look at that. So we've got our masking tape down here covering the areas that will be uh, covered in wood deck, wood floor. Um, this is all going to get primed. Um, there is separate colours to be done afterwards, but we just want to get it primed for now. So floor went down well. It's all stuck down quite solidly. It's not going to go anywhere. So happy it all fitted really, really well. And while I was doing that, I managed to get all these chairs, all, all the seats all uh, tidied up and ready. Uh, so while that's drying, I'll be putting all these, uh, sorry about the glare, all these um, brackets that go on the back of each chair. They go on underneath, underneath the back of there. There are more parts to that chair. There's frames for those, for these seats, which something I'm not looking forward to. There's a lot of them. Uh, we've actually got like sprues of them here all these seat frames uh, and from what I can tell there's a lot of cleanup on these some of these most of them are all connected 
to the sprue by between eight and ten connection points that need to be tied up. Very long process that'll be. I wish I could do this in my sleep. <laughs> anyway, I'll go get some paint on that now. Uh, we'll come back and have a look at it primed up and I'll make a start on some of these seats. All right, and cross your fingers. Hopefully I have some paint coming soon and we'll be able to get at least uh, get the wheels painted up that have been sitting here for a while now or the rims ready to go and, uh, and get some uh, masking done on that. But I really want to make sure I put a good thick layer of uh, primer over this because it's metal. I know the Outlaw Paints um, grey primer is going to be fine, I'm sure. But um, I've never really had to mask on metal before. So I want to make sure there's a nice thick layer of it on there. And uh, that'll be fine because these sides need to be done in aluminium. These need to be done in the purple red. And this part in here, I think that's aluminium on there. And we've got the red of the bus on here. So we need to make sure we can be able to mask up quite uh, safely. Okay, I shall return. Okay, welcome back. Uh, the other part is primed, but what I've decided to do is use photo etch primer, put down first, and then I'll put the Outlaw Paints um, gray primer on top of that. So that's all uh, drying at the moment. In the meantime, I've started on these seats, putting in these frames, We've done quite a bit actually. So these, the first uh, lot, the number 81s are all done with their frames on them. And now I'm just uh, putting these on. I'm using the MIG MO glue because it it uh, lets me uh, maneuver the piece around without it sticking too quick. So, and also just as a tip, there is a, a right and a wrong way. There's an upside down. You'll, you'll notice that they fit better if they're up the right way. So just make sure you get them the right way around. Um, it's pretty much just watered down MIG MO photo etch glue, and all I do is just smear it along the back of the seat here, like that, and then pop our bit of steel on there, frame, position it right on the edge, sit there. Just that's good to go. And I'm just sitting them over here to dry and work on the next. Okay. So um, I'll keep body along on this and shortly I'll undercoat the um, that floor and we'll I'll bring that out and have a look. I'll be done here shortly. Okay. I'll be back in a sec. Okay, welcome back. So there it is. There's our floor area all primed up and uh, Looking really good, ready for some colour, which I haven't got yet. I'm waiting on the colour, so that I'm just going to put aside for now, and uh, we'll get back to that later. What I'm going to do in the meantime is, put that over there, uh, these are finished. Uh, both, all the, all the seats have all the metal that's on the back, so that's done and out of the way. So what I've started on now is actually doing the frames on the, on the backs of the chairs. I've taken a few off and done some here. There is a lot of them to do. Um, there's a lot of connection points I mentioned earlier. So I've trimmed up these ones. So these are step 36, and there's 6 by H83 are the parts. So there's six of them. Now, I've tidied them all up on these ones, sanded them, got all the little nub marks off, and it's okay. I've left that one on there on every one of them deliberately because that is a place where I can place, put a clip to hold um, like this so for painting, okay? So I'll be able to just go like that and spray them because the where that comes off underneath the back there can't be seen it won't be seen it'll be on the bottom side of that so i've left that nub on there as a point to hold them with now this is going to take a long time okay like I, I spent an hour maybe an hour and a half doing four of these okay i've got another three here 
then with the instructions i've got another 26 to go <laughs> you know and you can see what i mean look at all the connection points there's one two three four five six uh seven eight nine ten on that one alone all right that all needs to be cleaned up and they need to be kept in their correct order as well otherwise i've got a feeling it would be quite a mess if i got them mixed up so i've got individual containers ready to put each set in okay all right so now i'm going to finish up the video here I'll spend the next few days getting all these frames ready to go and hopefully um, we'll have some paint arrive and we'll be able to do, do a bit of painting on here and everything else that we're waiting on it for. And uh, yeah, looks great. Um, these seats, I may be able to um, at least get them um, primed. So that would be a good start. Um, there's also all the frame, uh, the uh the sort of the stands for the seats need to be climbed up and painted as well all right so okay i'll finish up here and uh thank you all for watching um don't forget to catch me live every friday for my live stream um we can take a look at uh, what i'm up to at the moment and what you guys are doing and it's great to catch up with with uh, my subscribers and uh and we can have a chat about everything um, don't forget to leave a comment. Your comments are welcome uh, and inspiring, <laughs> especially when I go to do some painfully agonizing stuff like this. So, yeah. All right. Uh, all good. I'll see you all in part four. Okay. Cheers, all. Bye for now. <laughs>